joints on the left, living the hills, but I still get a spread. Started with a little, but I still reinvest it. Fear how I feel, then you feel less a blessing. I just want the lesson, I just want protection. I'm up and I'm down, but the sound like progression. Mama never plans if he waits for perfection. I think it's to the uh, down. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I got your watch list coming in in December 14, 2021, and the stock market is on ice. Not like Disney on ice, it's not like that, but like icing the kicker. Today was a very interesting day because we saw another stall out near highs. We did get that volatility back. The NASDAQ and small caps moved over 1%, the S&P and down just under that. But I got a couple of things that I want to show you as we get into the Fed meeting. We started the day off good and then things slipped and put us back to this range. And that's what I mean about being on ice. We're pretty much going to do the same thing tomorrow. Now, that's my estimate. We'll go over it. I have a lot to show you, but Wednesday is Powell, and this is going to be a very important time. So this is what I showed on stream, this bottom chart. This is the S&P 500 in 2013. So similar situation right here, November 22nd. This is when Powell was up there with Yellen, and then he started saying stuff about taper tantrum and all of that, or it was around right here. We started to drop a little bit, then we popped up, and now we're right here, just below highs leading into the taper announcement, and he is expected to increase the pace of tapering, so... Come back to 2013, same exact thing here. This was the announcement at the end of May. Bernanke was in front of Congress, and he said, we may need to speed things up. The market dropped, and you could see the pace that we had here was a lot faster. This one was more gradual, but then we popped up, and then day or two before the Fed meeting, or pretty much the day thereof, you could see right below all-time highs. So this is what I mean of we're on ice. You're getting the little pop and drop. It's still dropping five ten percent coming back here towards the highs everybody is finalizing their moves today and there was a lot of different narratives so we got a lot to talk about i want to go over everything that happened in the market today what we're looking up for tomorrow how we're going to set up for wednesday and then the plays that we made and the plays for the rest of the week so uh, let us not delay you guys know what you need to do drop your thumbs up on the video make sure you subscribed and if you don't know we are live monday through friday 30 minutes for open it's the First link in the description and it's pinned in the comments. We better see you there in the morning. It's free 99. It costs you nothing to join. YouTube.com slash the stock market. You can post the play, see the plays, watch the watch us come to life. And yes, if your phone auto corrects Santa to Satan, then uh, we, we, we love you and we're, we're praying for you. You're going to be okay. Merry Christmas. And the most important thing you need to do, post or watch below. Let us know what you're looking at. Got any plays, comments, remixes, anything. Post them below and source that info. Shout out to chat, baby. So right off the bat, like I said, you are icing the kicker. We are probably going to stay at this level at least until tomorrow. We're going to talk about that here. But how today played out, we started off pretty decent in the morning. Again, futures in China and overseas, everything was looking pretty good. Even by the time our markets opened, the UK, they gave up a little bit of the gains, but they were still green. But pretty much when our markets opened, it was an instant sell-off. So there was a couple of things things at play but again this looked like a just straight sell-off it was pretty bad in the morning because a lot of names I mean we got held up by the value stocks Coca-Cola Microsoft uh, they were up a little bit Apple was even up two percent and then it flipped to down two percent so that was actually huge but a lot of things were selling off and this is now even what gave us some of the narrative today it started off with some of the virus headlines the UK they were saying a lot of stuff and that wasn't good they had a lot of the negative headlines, but then we're also coming off the CPI and that hangover. But now this whole idea of profit taking, this was added to the narrative today. A lot of analysts on Wall Street, a lot of market participants, they were just talking about this attitude of people taking profits, whether it is the big cap stocks, the way you're seeing the breadth play out, even the small caps, GameStop, AMC, even down to Bitcoin, people are getting this idea of year end profit taking. So we heard this a little bit earlier. Earlier. We even got a little bit of it today and even the fear came back and we're going to talk about that. But overall, it's the 
same situation as two weeks ago when the volatility was playing out. You're getting all of these things at the same time, and it's looking like after Powell, we should get that green or red light. So coming into your first pretty picture, a lot of people were talking about this today. Just again, this idea of profit taking, some of the retail stocks, the safe havens, all of that. And what this is showing you now, it's not a pretty picture, just a simple chart, but it's showing you the amount of quarter streaks of retail buying more stocks than not. So this is measured by inflows pretty much at the end of a quarter being higher than the outflows. That usually signals retail households buying. And what the data shows is that you get an interesting uh, one year forward guidance afterwards. So pretty much in 1966, there was a four quarter streak of retail buying. And then the next year forward SPX change was up 8.9. Then in 73, it was four quarters. And then that led to down 27. 76 was five quarters, down 15. 88 was five, led to a 23% gain. 2000, 2001, again, another four quarters consecutive, down 26, down 22. And then 04 was four leading to six. And then 2013, right around the taper tantrum, five quarters in a row, 24% gain the next year. So I thought this was important because there's a lot of people talking about a lot of different things here with what is causing this. Powell this week is going to be important, but don't forget we are about to start a new year and this is where a lot of the guidance and people making expectations, even the next earnings after this, it is going to get crazy. So I won't get too ahead of myself coming into tomorrow. We are probably going to trade a lot like today. It could do it on the upside. So instead of immediate selling, we might get a little bit of a run up, but I would not be surprised to watch most of the day pretty much stay in a range. We don't do anything and then maybe have a little pop or drop there at close and then that's it. And then the day after that Wednesday for Powell, it'll probably be a gap up or down and then we are all going to stay calm until he says something and then you'll get your volatility. But the one thing we did talk about today, there is just enough uncertainty right now to say that we're going to stay in the range. So again, I should go back here. Instead of staying in just this range, just pay attention to the last couple days here since last week. We're pretty much not going to go above or below this too much until Powell speaks. It looks like we're getting ice. There's not a lot of confidence on both sides. And even this was one of the factors, even the fear and greed index, even though we're near all-time highs, fear has crept back in. So it's very weird, but at least we know, you know, premiums may bounce around your still getting weird premium effects. Everything is riding on Powell, and then that is going to be our final few weeks. And then finally, don't forget, you're still going to get retail sales and industrial production numbers, as well as housing data and housing starts. And then you still got all of the rest of the world with their feds or central banks and what they're going to do. So coming into the company news and events, uh, this one I thought was very interesting. This one came in after hours, but Nike announced that they're acquiring virtual sneaker maker RTFKT. So this is a brand new company founded in 2020. Uh, Nike's buying them. I don't know for how much. It's not publicly traded, but they make virtual NFT sneakers. So this is a metaverse play. We'll watch some of the metaverse stocks. That could have an effect. That one was interesting. And this one, this one was very interesting, but Hog, Harley Davidson, they said that they are going to be listing their EV motorcycle unit as a SPAC. I forgot what it's called, but essentially they're making electric motorcycles. They're going to spin it off as a new company and they're going to take it the SPAC route to rob wall street or the retail investor but there was that and then cali uh, they rocked the solar industry this one we saw the news when it happened but this one might get pretty bad here uh depending on how things play out but they said that they want to roll back some of the solar incentives to change the incentives they want people to do what will help the grid so essentially what they're talking about is lowering the excess credits to 10 cents from 30 cents so right now a solar panel most houses don't have batteries attached so your house generates some of the energy any energy that you don't use it sends it back to the grid and then you get credited so if you use electricity at a later time it pretty much balances out but what they want to do is lower the amount from 30 cents to 10 cents which would kind of eliminate a lot of the savings and then this is the real kicker they're proposing new grid connection charges and they may even want to charge 
$500 a year just to keep your solar panel connected to the grid. So this one could get a little bit wild. Again, it seems like they want people to install batteries. So we'll see how Tesla plays out. But this is what they're saying, where they want to get rid of some of this stuff where people could have batteries on their house generated and then they don't use the grid at all, more or less. So pretty interesting. I thought that one was crazy. But watch out for all those solar stocks. We saw a little bit of a drop and pop earlier in the day. And then coming in at GameStop and AMC, this was just the headline. So don't get mad at me. Uh, but it says that GameStop and AMC have dragged the meme stock group to a seven seventh month low as risk appetite or risk appeal is ebbing and people are pretty much saying the FOMO effect is fading away. So the one thing you got to realize is that AMC and GME both of them are still up substantially from when they have their run up. So that's a big part that people are talking about. But what they're saying now is some of this move, they're leading it into the profit takers where some people are taking profits. The other side is now not getting the FOMO. Instead of thinking about FOMO and upside, people are now more worried about the risk and the downside. So that was interesting. As you can see here, they're coming to that seventh month low since that initial January run up. So that one was interesting. And then US, they pitched a truce to Japan on the Trump era steel and aluminum tariffs. If you remember, there was a deal in October uh, between the United States and Japan. It's pretty much modeled after that agreement. So I remember we did see some effect. I will be keeping an eye out for that tomorrow. And then the debt ceiling, uh, this one, I mean, it seems like it's chill, but it is going to get the Senate vote tomorrow and then it'll go to the House, assuming nobody has a problem with that in the House. I don't think they do. So we'll see what happens. But if anything goes wrong with any of this stuff, you are eerily close to December 15th. That is is the first ever cutoff time that Yellen has mentioned. So keep that one in mind. Finally, we saw this one on stream as well today too, but TikTok rival uh, Triller, they're said to go public through a merger with Sea Change International. So we were looking at this. I read into it a little bit. I'll wait for more details. Both comments have declined to comment. Essentially, this is somebody close to the matter, did not want to be named. Both companies were reached out. They didn't say anything, but this is the OG ghetto SPAC. Essentially, instead of IPOing instead of spacking, what they're going to do is find a company that is just beating down a dog shit. Uh, I guess in this case, it's still on the NASDAQ. Again, this company has been around since like 2001. Sea Change International, but it's just a low price. It's only a $60 million market cap. And essentially what they're going to do is buy up 50, 60% of the company or the company agrees to merge with them. They buy all the shares out and then now they pretty much kick everybody out and then sea change turns into Triller and then it's already traded on the market. It probably will just have a lot of toxic debt. So yeah, the OG ghetto SPAC, but we watched that play yesterday. We'll see how that goes on uh, tomorrow. And that is pretty much it. It's going to be very, very simple. Our work is cut out for us. We'll see what the pregame to Powell brings, but sure. Sure enough, after Wednesday, it's going to get exciting, so I hope you're ready, but that is pretty much it, so let us get into the plays. <laughs> so right off the bat, I got three different stacks that I'm looking at coming into tomorrow. I have plays on all three, and there is still a couple of other plays that I made today, but the first one is going to be Tesla, so I'm going to tell you right now. I'm looking for a quick volatility flip. So fanboys, don't come at me. I know So my second Tesla put in two weeks. I should have sold the first one. I'm still holding that one. If you guys remember, that one is my place marker. I'm down 36. Remember, I was up 100% on this one and I didn't take profits, but I talked about that one. I slipped up on that one. If anything, I probably would have taken profits and then I would have double dipped again here today. And this is now the main reason why I like the play. We're going to talk about it. But the first reason is that I just see this as better than the VIX. So if we're going to get any volatility leading into Powell, I'm pretty much assuming that if there is any up or down or maybe to the downside, because I did get a lot of other calls, I'm assuming that Tesla puts will probably pay me out better than any sort of VIX put. So that's the first reason. And then now the premiums are down. So you guys have seen this. And now this is something I really like because last time this stock was at here just one week ago, there's still just about like 30 days left on this contract. So it shouldn't have decayed that much. There was just a lot of volatility, but these contracts are now down 36%. So I was able to get closer to the money. Same time. Again, the timing is going to be tricky, but the one thing I like about all of it is simply that I'm getting the put now cheaper than when I got it last time. Again, I think I was like up here or something. If you really think about it, now the stock is down over $100 and 
the puts are cheaper. So I'm looking for a volatility play. The other set of reasoning behind it is there may even be some of that GME effect where some of these people start to unwind some of the FOMO stocks or people start kind of positioning more for what are the downside risk as opposed to what are the upside opportunities. So there's a lot of different things from it, but the play is risky. It's a little bit crazy here because it's just Tesla and yeah, you guys know how it works, but that's the first play. And then surprisingly for the second play, Lucid, uh, and I actually bought calls on this. So we talked about this here today, and this is even one thing I want to highlight. I mean, with all of the plays, I've been trying to show you guys what I've been doing. I'm going over the premium so you guys could get an idea of what is cheap or not. Again, I'm using my own portfolio to take advantage when I could see something moving in the direction but cheaper premiums. But now this is what happened with the last taper tantrum. So even if it does play out again, this was their fed meeting and then you saw the drop eventually you came right back up and after 2013 it led to a 24 percent gain uh one year year over year so you can see i'm going both ways and that's why i like the volatility in tesla but now lucid they got some good news a lot of people are liking them but essentially i'm just playing that nasdaq acquisition news we also made a play on airbnb as well too but the thing i like about lucid is that the premiums are lower than where they have been in the last few weeks so if i compare it to Airbnb. I did make an Airbnb play, but I had to pay a little bit higher than I would have wanted to or than it was a couple days ago. It is not came down to that earnings level, but now the Lucids, these ones are just like the lowest price these contracts have been. So I grabbed two of the May 65 calls. I bought them at 410 a pop. Again, it may get hurt if small caps and hype gets killed, but we will see what happens. That is the second play. And then finally, Sam, I don't know if you've seen this on a watch list and since it's clapped, uh, you know, this is a weird one, but we talked about this one today. I was looking at a lot of different names that move. Uh, we even sold out of one of our Coca-Cola plays. A lot of the consumer staples and values have ran. So the thing about Sam, it has already been beaten down. It is one of these value plays. I'm hoping until next year, again, I'm going to be a little bit biased on it, but we talked about it today. Pretty much they were up a lot today. When everything's selling, some of the names that have already sold off heavy, those are the ones that kind of go up. And I, I think a lot of people have already tax loss harvested all year on this stock, especially coming into next year. So I think it could do good. And a lot of the beverage names did good. But overall, in the entire market here, the consumer staple stocks, they have been doing very, very well, even over the last couple of days. So everything with inflation and all that, that will be key. Again, high margin stocks or some of these real product ones. I mean, Sam, they guided bad on that. So we'll see. But even then with Sam, we talked about it today. They're probably going to have the lowest expectations coming into next year. So I am going to look at some plays with it. If it does keep going up tomorrow, I think it'll just be way too juice, but wait till this pulls back, but watch out for some of these value plays. Again, Coca-Cola and all those other ones included, but those are going to be the main plays as far as everything else. We sold out of that Coca-Cola's got out at like 35 cents. It was about like a 20% gain, but we were down like 80% on that. So got to get out of those, grab the Lucid. Then I grabbed two of the Airbnb 220s at 650. Again, I did the little thingy again when I was making the order on there. It was being annoying. I was trying to bid at 550 or like six bucks. Uh, then it just filled me on the ask. There was a very wide spread, but aiming for those April, still holding those January ones, but they've declined. But again, the news with both Lucid and Airbnb, they all popped up today and then kind of sold off, or at least Airbnb did. But the thing you got to realize, the actual addition is not going to happen till Friday. That's probably when they're going to start buying all of the stocks there, and then it will be trading there on Monday. So the real catalyst for these is going to hit on Friday when all of the money comes in. And then finally, I made the play on Tesla. Oh, and I grabbed Abbey I grabbed 150 calls, 34 cents, spent $300 for February. Uh, they're a slow mover, but I like it. Abbey was leading all-time high breakout. I think it could do good. And again, healthcare has been leading the last couple days. So keep your eye out for that. But those are the main plays as far as everything else. Again, I'm going to be watching Coca-Cola tomorrow. This move was absolutely epic. Again, a lot of the value plays and how they moved. Again, we've had them in the long term and you're seeing all of the value plays that we had from the beginning of the year. Those are the ones that are hitting these all-time highs here. So keep that in mind and watch out for that. And then Facebook and Microsoft. Watch Facebook. It has been a behemoth the last couple of days. It held up the best. They still closed up a percent and a half. Microsoft ended up slipping a little bit and then Apple was doing the best. Again, they had that safe haven effect today, but they sold off. The premiums are all low 
over the place. The puts are down. The calls are up, but not as much as you think. I mean, just wait till Powell and we'll see how this thing gets unlocked. But watch out Facebook, Microsoft, Apple. Those are some of those safe haven big cap leaders. So watch out for them. Watch first solar and then run. Uh, these are the solar stocks. So they had that little pop and lock on the news there with California. But I'm thinking that may be multiple day news. Or if we do get an update, pretty much if they do a fee for the solar grid, I mean, watch the battery makers and then solar panel people might get clapped in their Walmart. I mean, they it, it, it's done this every single day. Every single time around 12 lately, it has just started to run out of nowhere. So they're picking up. I don't think the premiums on the like midterms are, are up or the ones further out the money, but keep your eye out for them. Again, if this consumer staple uh, value rotation continues, watch out for that. AMC and GME, again, just watch for some of the breakdowns. If you start breaking some of these key levels, I mean, some of them are about to hit, I mean, lower than, than, than where they've been in a while. Again, this has been a little scary because it's not just about these. I mean, it factors into the Russell 2000, but I mean, once people start seeing this, people's imaginations for a lot of other things start to take hold. So we'll see how that plays out. Roblo, they went down today again. I think this is going to be great both ways on the volatility. If it doesn't break, has a lot of support. Again, that Nike Metaverse news may help, but the puts that we had started to come back, if it does break below 110, you saw today the volatility and premiums are ready to rock. So going to be keeping my eye out on that one. And then finally, TLT in the dollar, baby. Is this 2013? It is. I guess 2013 kind of looked at what happened with 2013 man that's crazy the rates just kept going up over there i guess so we need to zoom this one out but i guess that was tlt it did lead the rates running up a little bit but in this case we're still at the range tlt was up a lot today you're right at this point and pretty much watch a little bit above or below tomorrow it might go above and if it's firmly above here coming into tomorrow maybe that may be an early sign that it's going to be negative if we stay below here then that may mean the market is pretty much waiting on the response but the stronger if you get a strong move above here i think that could be a negative warning so we will see what happens and keep your eyes peeled. But that is your watch list, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure Hydra Healthy ready to go. Make sure post your watch list. Make sure we see you there in the morning. I need the armor on. I need the helmet shine. I need you to remember the good seed always grows, baby. But the cold loves you. I love you. And we'll see you in the morning. Let's go.